Hello everybody and welcome back. My name is Winback and on today's episode of Grim Dawn we are on to our third leg of the Slugger build. This is a piercing, bleeding, and physical damage build that focuses on the use of a one-handed ranged weapon called the Slugger. It's also got an offhand and the soldier slash nightblade trees. You could swap out the Nightblade for an Inquisitor if you so felt inclined, but that's just what we're working with as of right now. Now feel free as always to like, comment, and subscribe your heart out as we jump into everything that makes this build up to this point. As a disclaimer, this build is not max level or even close to it, so there won't be a Grim Tools link. If you're following along, that won't be a big deal, but if you're not, then just wait until the next video for the cheat sheet. So currently the build has a few key abilities and a number of backup abilities to fill in the blank spots. Cadence is still our number one big bad boy since it couples so well with the slugger. And we take that and all of the modifiers for it as well. We're going to max them the F out crank those puppies all the way to 11 because it is time to jam the barrel of your gun into the souls of your enemies. Next is actually a component ability that comes from the silver core bolts component. You'll want to equip this ammo to your slugger ASAP because this ability is like a shotgun of knives and it will shred a lot of tanky enemies in this game. Your last big skill is going to be your uh, your phantasmal blades. Your uh, throwing knives that actually go further than your shotgun throwing knives, but these ones are going to actually penetrate enemies while dealing a donk load of damage. Make sure that you're taking Heartseeker and maxing that first so your knives have the highest percentage to penetrate through possible enemies. And remember to always wear protection. Devotions are a big point of this video too, since we've made it to a point in the game where there's enough to go around, but at the moment we have two outer constellations that we're building towards which will round out our build the best. So the first is going to be as Raka the Eternal Sands, and the second is going to be the Unknown Soldier. Both of these provide piercing, bleeding, and physical damage while giving us really cool abilities. Sands is a useful kind of pet-like missile that will hunt people down, much like a sandworm from Beetlejuice. And if you don't understand that reference, I'm afraid that there's no hope for you at all. Unknown Soldier creates clones that last a short period of time and also deal piercing and bleeding damage. So they're really helpful. Most of your abilities, though, in this uh, devotion tree are going to proc off of critical attacks. So 100% of the time that you get a critical attack on the ability that is assigned to the devotion, you will get one of these things to happen with the exception of Sans. Sans is on a 20% chance to uh, proc and we've just attached that to Cadence. Since Cadence pierces through everybody, we have a very high chance to proc as Raka's Sans as often as we need to. Now you may also have noticed that we are rocking some blade spirits here in the build. These are pretty new actually just for this video and there is a very small percentage of points in the uh, the ability itself, but we're using those to also proc one of our earlier devotions which is the assassin's blade. Your blade spirits can critically hit, so when they do critically hit they are going to launch a flurry of blades in all sorts of different directions. And they also have their own little flurry of blades, so they have a big AoE of all the damage types that we need, and they can proc it pretty consistently. The blade spirits are also completely invincible, and they scale from player bonuses rather than pet bonuses, which is really fantastic because we don't have any room on any of our gear as this game is going on to uh, make any caveats for uh, pet pet damages, pet bonuses, pet stuff. So basically everything that we call down in this build is unkillable and is going to complement the abilities really well. Not to mention all of these abilities look pretty heckin' dope, so you can rely on it being flashy and pretty, well except maybe as Raka's Sands. It's, uh, 
It's more shiny, that one, you know? You might even call it golden. Like some kind of shiny golden substance that rains down upon the heads of your enemies. It's, it's really fancy stuff. Now, just because we like those two outer constellations doesn't mean we can ignore the ones that got us there. So, as Raka needs blue, yellow, and purple points, while the Unknown Soldier only needs blue and purple. So currently, I am rocking Lion, Assassin's Blade, and Assassin as my first early devotions, because they give purple and yellow in pretty decent amounts. They also give us damage in one of the three types that we are after. So from there, we've got Harvestman Scythe, which is full of healthy stats, mostly defensive oriented. So don't worry too much about damage from that one. Targo's Hammer with Harpy is going to be another big chunk of purple. And each of those is also going to feed passively into what we need for the build. Eel is also some really nice defensive stats and easy blues for only three points, followed by Bull. Now, all of these... Uh, of all of these, I can tell you with relative certainty that Bull will not be making it to the end of this build. The skill does not mesh well with our build, and I really only picked it because it was both blue and yellow. Now let's talk about some passives. There are a ton of them on the soldier side of things. The first two big ones from our soldier class are going to be Markovian's Advantage and Zolhan's Technique. I talked a little about these in the last video, but both of these skills are attack modifiers that are adding damage and utility to your shooting while you wait for your cadence shot to pop. Since cadence is only every uh, third shot, these two will fill in the blanks and lay down the law while the sheriff takes a big long nap waiting for that third shot to happen. Each have a percentage chance to activate, so maybe you don't get them all the time, but when you do get them, they slap. And they may also overlap with cadence, making that the honkin' bullet from heaven that cleaves the giant bug lady in twain. Have you ever heard the word twain before? It's a big word. Mark Twain? It's the last name. It's also a word that means, like, split in two. I think. I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm not your English teacher. Read a book. I know I need to. Now, the next up, or uh, next passive up, is going to be Oleron's Rage, which is a huge steroid to our damage, providing both physical and internal damage buffs, but it's also going to be giving us offensive ability and movement speed. So, utility wise, it's going to make it easier for us to hit enemies, and it's going to make moving around and kiting those enemies much more safe because we should be moving much, much faster. It really is just perfect for kiting and making us better bullet slingers. Now we also have Fighting Spirit for a dash of offensive ability, but that only has a 10% chance to activate when we are hit, so it's just kind of there because our gear is making it easy to take it. Uh, Men Here's Will is going to be our panic option upon dropping really low. That'll give us a big chunk of health regen and health back. Uh, but it only procs once you go below, well, depending on the number of points that you put in it, it only procs once you go below a certain health, but 30% on this build currently is what we are, we are looking towards. Now, next up is Field Command and Squad Tactics, uh, which is the modifier for Field Command. Those are going to be giving us offensive ability, defensive ability, armor, attack speed, and all damage. So lots and lots and lots of stats baked into that passive, and it is really, really helpful, especially if you're playing in a party, because that'll extend to your allies as well. It's really helpful just all around. Um, and then lastly, we have Scars of Battle. Scars of Battle is going to be giving us some very much needed CC reduction, along with bleeding resistance and armor absorption. Those are... In every build that I play, typically, Bleeding Resistance is one of the resistances that is tougher to come by, and typically eats up a lot of component slots to fill out, so it's good that we have a passive inside our tree that is rounding that out for us, which should make, you know, filling the resistance gaps a lot, uh, a lot easier. Now, Soldier is the dominant tree here, but let's not forget our lovely Nightblade. Nightblade has three passives that are pretty important to the build, the first being Phantasmal Armor. 
This one actually synergizes extremely well with Scars of Battle in reducing some CC, while also giving flat armor and pierce resistance. The next two passives are actually modifiers to the Pneumatic Burst skill though. Pneumatic Burst is the skill in which you will press the button, you'll get some health back, and you will get some offensive ability. The, uh, the button is really, really good because ultimately we will end up taking a lot of damage from range and when those melee enemies can get up on us. So it is good to be able to heal up a, an early chunk of damage that happens with Pneumatic Burst. But the first passive for that ability is called Shadow Dance, and this is going to give you a chance to have attacks completely miss while reducing your entrapment duration. Uh, so the, the ability to uh, dodge both melee and ranged attacks with Pneumatic Burst up is going to make you a lot more safe. Uh, it's going to make tanking, or sorry, it's going to make kiting a lot easier so you can get in and out of there. It starts off relatively low in terms of the percentage to dodge, but along with your devotions and your gear, you can get that percentage up there pretty decently to avoid a lot of uh, a lot of kind of cheesy damage if we're being honest uh, the next passive is elemental awakening now this isn't super important depending on your gear but my current gear is not giving me enough elemental resistance to really be happy about it so this uh, elemental awakening passive or modifier for pneumatic burst is kind of filling in that gap and making us a little bit more tanky, which is really, really helpful. Uh, but if I were properly geared, or if I found stuff that I really needed to have, I would not need to be using um, Elemental Awakening and could save the point. Now, each passive is mainly used for the defensive bonuses and all of that stuff, whether it's Nightblade or Soldier Tree, is going to help you kite more effectively and essentially live long enough for your Cadence and your Phantasmal Blades to clear the room. All of those passives keep you alive while your actives do all the damage, and that's how this build really comes together. Lastly though, on the topic of gear, there are a couple items you can find up to this point that will increase the effectiveness of the build. Number one, always equip a Slugger. It's piercing damage, it points into a deadly momentum, and cheekily enough, it can actually knock enemies down. The gun itself has a chance to just knock skeletons and enemies and just all sorts of bad guys flat on their ass for a, uh, a good long while, which helps kite even more. It's really a fun addition to the gun, but on top of that, it is also going to reduce enemy damage and is just generally a cool weapon. Uh, it reduces physical damage by a higher percentage than it does reducing other damage, but it does reduce basically all damage, uh, which is fantastic. I mean, the, the gun is... Uh, there's a reason I love it, and I made a build around it completely. Now, the next thing up is the Codex of Reckoning, which you'll need a good chunk of spirit to use, but the book is giving you a pretty substantial boost to physical damage, and it's also going to be reducing cooldowns. So, that being said, with the cooldowns reduced and the big boost to physical damage, you also get plus one to all skills in Soldier. So this book is really made for this class. I mean, it's, it's a caster weapon, obviously, but it is fantastic for everything that we can do. And it's just, just a really prickly pair right there, you know? You know, don't you know? Ah. Uh, the Goliath Signet is a uh, really, really strong ring, which is going to give you two points into Cadence, as well as buffs to your damage types. And we also get a little Earthquake passive that pairs nicely with all the other passive proccing abilities that we've got. So our Sands, uh, our Knife Boomerang, our uh, Shadow Soldiers, whenever we pick those up, our... our uh, knife hurricanes coming from our smaller knife tornadoes. I mean, there is so much passive stuff happening in this build, and Goliath's Signet really pairs well, or pairs nicely into that. Now, the only other really important gear piece at this stage is a Vendetta, and that is a Transcendent Relic. 
And honestly, I would prioritize building this relic ASAP because the passive skill is really, really strong. The plus one to all skills in Inquisitor is a little wasted, or it's completely wasted, sadly. Um, unless you want to go with the Inquisitor class over Nightblade. But the key thing here is that Cleansing Blade has a 15% chance on attack to proc with only 1.5 seconds cooldown. Now, Cleansing Blade does a big chunk of piercing damage and elemental damage while completely passing through enemies. I mentioned this in the last video as well, but this is your Knife Boomerang. So... Couple that with your knife bullets, your knife shotgun, and your knife buddies, and I'm sure you're sensing the theme by now. Really, with all that being said, this build is, uh, it's all about cadence, it's all about the soldier tree, but there's so many knives flying every direction that it's kind of hard not to get it confused with a Nightblade build, which is hilarious, ironic, and everything that I have ever wanted in a build, so... You're welcome for that. But that is going to do it for me, everybody. I'll be back next time with the level 100, or at least very close to it, slugger build. But yeah, I'll see you then. Peace out, everybody.